Yo, what's going on, guys? How you doing? I hope you guys having a good day, good night. Uh, beta is in an hour, so I'm gonna try to get through this as fast as I can and as with as accurate as I can. So, what you're seeing on screen right now is just a just a kind of a slight recommendation in terms of what gear to get early on uh, when you're first playing the game. This dagger right here, it's just really quick. It comes from your chapter one reward. You cannot craft it. So remember. This dagger is a chapter one reward you cannot craft. I will recommend this one. The reason why I recommend this one is because it gives you extra dexterity, allows you to reach this kind of dexter uh, these stat points uh, as you're leveling, and also it um, is a really it's a pretty solid dagger. Uh, the crossbow, all of these other things are going to be crafted once you're around chapter three. A uh, chapter three, it's going to have a con. It's going to tell you to it, part of the quest is going to have you talk to a contract manager it's actually going to have you talk to this specific contract manager um right here it's going to tell you to talk to this contract manager and also take contracts i'm going to recommend that you take armor and accessory contracts um probably like two armor two accessories one armor three accessories something along those lines okay um the reason why you take those uh contracts is because you again you get already one weapon for free and you're going to have a quest to craft weapons and it's going to give you a free cra uh, weapon lithograph to craft a second green weapon. So you just craft, so you just take the contract to get more uh, accessory and armor crafts. And these are going to be the accessories and armors you're going to craft. The reason why I recommend these is um, one, this is with the assumption that we're going to get PVP early on and that there's a lot of melee uh, characters or me melee players. So great sword, sword and shield, um, daggers, like that. If you don't see a lot of melee characters, or if you're not doing a lot of early on, um, if you're not doing a lot of PvP, or you don't plan on doing any PvP until after you're level 50, then you can just take anything that gives you dexterity, hit rate, and crit rate. Any of those three item effects, just take, just craft any items that give you those, and just stack dexterity, hit rate, crit rate. Now you notice I didn't say mana region. The reason why I didn't say mana region is because every almost every single mob that you attack is going to have a fury attack. It's you're going to see this purple circle when they attack. They're going to be CCs. If you do a stationary block, which is your Q skill, the skill that's right here. If you do a stationary one, so like normally if you move and press the Q skill, it's going to do a dodge roll. But if you stand still and press the Q skill, it's going to do one a stationary block. When you do a stationary block with a dagger's defensive skill, it gives you mana instant. Um, and so because of that, combine that with uh, getting Assassin's Step to rare, you're not going to have an issue with mana. Um, I did. I literally just leveled a character last night on stream and did not have a single issue with mana without putting a single point into wisdom. Okay, so there's that. Now, in that case, what stat points to put? I honestly recommend dexterity and strength. The reason why I recommend dexterity and strength is because strength is going to give you, uh, once you get to 30 strength, it's going to give you extra HP, gives you a little bit more survivability as you're leveling, makes it a little bit easier to tank the mobs. And then dexterity is going to give you damage, crit rate, and um, extra evasion and attack speed. Uh, pretty much all four amazing traits, uh, amazing stats for you to take as you're leveling. Okay. And then once you get 30 strength, 30, 40 dexterity, you can put some extra points into wisdom, whatever. All right. So that's as you're leveling. Once you reach a fresh level 50, these are the items that I recommend you take. It, again, under the assumption there's a lot of melee users and you're like kind of planning on doing a lot of PvP. These are the items I normally recommend to take. Um, this is a fresh 50 account. So as soon as you get level 50, these are going to be the items. Um, that you're given to you or crafted. This lethal fortune ring is not given to you or crafted. The way that you get this ring is in chapter four of your main story quest, right? This is going to be near Vienta Village, which is this area all the way over here. Once you get here, be weary. There's going to be a quest that tells you to craft rings. It's this exact quest right here. You're going to speak to somebody in Vinta Village, you're going to find an observer, and then it's going to tell you to craft an uncommon accessory. I recommend you to craft a ring. You already have rings, but craft another one. The reason why I recommend to craft another ring is because the next part of that quest line is going to tell you to complete a lithograph book. 
You're probably not going to be able to complete it right away because you won't have the extra blueprints, but maybe you will. I don't know. Um, but the lithograph book that you want to complete is it's called, where is it? Rustic Mother Nature Rings. You complete this one because it gives you a lethal fortune ring. This ring is so good that even to this day, when I have on my main character so many different purple items and so many different builds, I still to this day use this ring. It's that good of a ring for crossbow dagger specifically. So uh, that's why in chapter four, the main story quest, I recommend you use that uh, craft this ring. Okay, so um, this is the gear. I'm going to have these links down below. Also, I'm going to be streaming... Uh, Every, the whole time that I'm playing the beta, I will be live. So you guys can ask any questions you want. Um, yeah, but basically, uh, these are the gear that I recommend. I'll have the links down below for these. Um, the reason why I recommend this gear is because it gives you relatively high... Uh, it does give you a decent amount of HP, um, but it also gives you relatively high accuracy for people that stack evasion in the beta. And then it's also going to give you relatively high crit rate. And on top of that, it does give you relatively high melee evasion. Um, your magic and range evasion is going to come with your Shadow Walker skill, which I, if you're going to do PvP, I recommend getting this and Nature's Power, the first two passives to Epic as soon as you can. Uh, Shadow Walker is going to give you additional range and magic evasion as you uh, use a mobility skill. So that's why you can have a little bit less range and magic evasion and be okay. Um, now, with that being said, uh, obviously you're not going to stay on green items much longer after you're level 50, you're going to focus on blue items. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going to be in the game and what's not going to be in the game, which grind spots are going to be available to grind right away and which ones you're not going to be able to. Um, so the blue items are a little bit iffy. Now, if I had to give you an idea of what to grind for, if you're able to go and grind in the ant's nest, for example, the ant's nest, let me see if I can find it. They have a blue piece of items here. This is not it. I have to find it. Here we go. Impure witch's linen. Pants are amazing blue pants for you to get right away. Um, if you can grind an ant's nest. Thing is, it's a drop. It's an RNG drop. I don't know what the uh, drop rate is going to be in this beta for these items. So I don't really want to recommend them if you can't get them and get them traded out. But if you can, they're really, really good. And they drop in Ant's Nest from the Acid Ant. Okay? Cool. Um, and then, so some other things, like another place is uh, down here in Temple of Silaveth, right? There are these, if I could find them, there are these boots. These boots are amazing boots. They give you move speed and dexterity and a lot of move speed. And you can get these traded out as well. These are also really, really good boots. But they, they're an RNG mob from a Shade Assassin. I don't know what the drop rate's going to be like in this beta, right? So I can't fully recommend it uh, because I don't know if it's going to be an easy to get or if it's going to take you forever and waste your time. Those are some blue items I can recommend. Um, but these items right here, you are for sure going to have once you get level 50 because the rest of the items are main story quests. And yeah, um, so gloves. So in terms of blue gloves that you can get, there's a few different blue gloves. Um, the ones that I would honestly recommend in terms of blue gloves, if I can find them, are Indomitable Strength Gloves. If they're available to get right away, I don't know if they are. You can always use TL Codex. Uh, let me show you guys. This is a good tip for the beta. Use DL Codex. You can find different pieces of gear and find out where they drop. Now, um, with Indomitable Strength Gloves, uh, see where they drop. They drop by Dark Wizards. That means they're going to be dropped, I think, in... Is that... Um, that might be Temple of Silaveth, or they might be uh, Shadowed Crypt. If it's Temple of Silaveth, great. No, it's not Temple of Silaveth, so it's probably Shattered Crypt. Shattered Crypt, Shadow Crypt is probably not going to be unlocked in the beta. If it's, in the, uh, if it's unlocked in the beta and it's and you guys can grind as a party there, great. If you can't, then don't even bother. Um, <laughs> don't even bother. Instead, you can get some other items, some other armor pieces. Uh, ideally, you want to have... I mean, if, if you don't care about melee evasion... Oh, so Bloody Shadow Gloves are also incredibly amazing gloves you can get. Uh, but again, I don't think you're going to be able to get those right away. Um, so some other really, really good 
blue pieces of armor that you can get are Moonlight Wind Bracers, which is really, really good. It gives you crit rate. Um, the reason why the crit rate is really nice is because um, basically crossbow dagger is very reliant on crit even at even at a late game as you can see my minimum maximum is crazy 29 minimum 195 maximum crit damage in this game basically guarantee or crit hit guarantees max rolls um every time you do an attack it rolls between 29 to 195 um so it'll guarantee that 195 um that's basically that's basically that 195 is because i don't have any stat points distributed right now but yeah you really want to have you really you really rely on crit landing crits for crossbow dagger which is also kind of somewhat of a bad side because some people can stack to counter your crit and then it becomes even harder um yeah okay so that's kind of the gearing um i'm not gonna say this is gonna be the best gear because it's very dependent gearing is very paper rock scissors because you get like evasion um, but you get three different types, melee, magic, and range, and it's going to be dependent on what the other players in the, on your server are playing. If they're playing against a lot of magic users, you probably don't want to do this build. You want to switch some items out like this piece of gear. You can switch it out to get more magic. If you, if you are on a, a server that has a lot of magic users, when you reach level 50, okay, once you reach level 50, you're going to have a piece of gear. It's going to basically, you're going to have a quest and you're going to be able to get a purple piece of gear. If you're playing against a lot of magic users, take special resistance ancient dragon armor. This is if you hit rate. This is actually the best hit rate item in the game in terms of that gives you hit rate in for armor pieces. It also gives you dexterity pluses for crossbow dagger, um, but it's leathers, which means you can stack magic and range evasion. Okay, so if there's a lot of magic and range players, let's focus on leather armor. Um, if there are a lot of melee users. Then you can get this plate piece because it gives you max health and melee evasion um, to allow you to get over a thousand melee evasion. If you're playing a lot of range users, then I mean, both plate and leather is going to help you against range. So then you're going to have to decide, um, hey, you have a lot of range users, but then do you have a lot of melee users with range or do you have a lot of uh, magic users with the range users? If there's a lot of magic users and range users, then get this piece, if there's a lot of melee users and ranged users, then get this piece. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Uh, in terms of stat priority, when you're leveling, honestly, I I'd leveled to 50 last night without a single point into wisdom. Crossbow dagger, uh, I thought I think I said this already, but crossbow dagger, basically you can literally just get mana regen from stationary blocks and getting this uh, assassin scepter rare. Um, okay, so let's talk about PVE. So PVE builds. Um, so PVE builds are basically going to be like this. When you're talking about a bossing or dungeons, it's going to be something like this. There are a few different options you can choose here. Uh, weak point shot is really, really good. You use it whenever a boss is doing a fury attack, and then your whole party is going to get increased crit damage against that boss for like six seconds. If you don't care about them and you just want additional attack speed, you can use wind snatcher. Every time you use knife throwing, you toss wind snatcher out to get additional attack speed. So those, those that's going to be kind of the variation there. Um, uh, and then so let's continue on so basically the combo so to speak you're going to do um regardless of wind snatcher weak point it's going to be inject venom thorn gale selfless effusion and immortal mark after that you toss shadow strike the reason why you do shadow strike after before you do all your damage is because you want to proc nature's power before doing all your damage for increased damage right um you will then do quick fire well if you have high attack speed you do Shadow Strike into Fatal Sigma, Quick Fire, Predatory Strike, Brutal Incision, Knife Throwing. Okay? In that order. If you do not have high attack speed, then instead, after Mortal Mark, you do Shadow Strike, Fatal Sigma, Knife Throwing, Predatory Strike, Brutal Incision, into Quick Fire. The reason why that is, is because selfless diffusion increases your offhand chance for six seconds. But after you pop the skill, you have six seconds to get the biggest things are to make sure they're uh, to make sure you have your knife throwing, fatal stigma, predatory strike and brutal incision out. Quick fire is really good with this skill, too. But these uh, predatory strike and brutal incision will do more damage than quick fire just alone. So that's why uh, you want to make sure with selfless uh, with selfless diffusion out, you get these off. Also with mortar mark, which is like three seconds. Um, but if you have a lot of, uh, if you have a lot of attacks, you can get quick fire off before you use these skills. If you don't use these skills and then go into quick fire. Um, 
yeah, that's basically it. Uh, Fatal Sigma, just, I mean, you guys can read, uh, so I don't think I need to tell you guys exactly what it does. But you, the reason why you use this skill um, is because it does more damage with poison. And knife throwing throws out five knives, but Thorngale, they're considered a projectile, so Thorngale will also do additional five attacks, so that's ten attacks. And if you have selfless diffusion, then those five knives turn into ten knives, and Thorngale will then goes from <laughs> ten attacks to twenty attacks, so that's instantly stacking twenty stacks of poison. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about skill priority, skill upgrade priority. You have mana issues, get this one at least upgraded to rare or so uh, to get additional mana recovery. Um, and then after that, you're going to have your DPS skills. Quick fire, you get it to rare as soon as you can, because then every time it's poison, you do more damage. Uh, motor mark, you get it to rare for additional damage after three seconds. Uh, predatory strike, this is the biggest one to where from green to epic, it's a big difference of damage. So I would recommend getting this up as soon as you can as well. Throws three and... Brutal Incision comes at rare, so those three skills to rare is going to be the first three I would recommend. Then you can kind of get like Inject Venom when you can. Um, this is assuming you're doing PvP, right? So those should be the active skills. Passive skills, Assassin Step to rare is pretty important for uh, you getting additional mana every time you kill a mob. Um, aside from that, Assassin's Instinct is going to be the next one you get to rare ASAP. Later on, you can get Ambidexterity up. Uh, but yeah, okay. So then Epic skills. Nature's Power should be the first one you get to Epic. Uh, this is biggest dip, boost in damage every time you use a mobility skill. The next thing is Shadow Walker. Again, assuming PvP is happening too, you're going to get Shadow Walker up because that's extra evasion um, for you. Right after that, you get Assassin's Instinct to Epic as soon as you can for more crit rate. Um, and then you can get Ambidexterity to Epic. This one literally doesn't matter. You're never going to use it in PvP or PvE. Um, Maybe if you're doing the range kiting build or like a mid-range kiting build uh, for PvP, but honestly, that's yeah, kind of meh. Um, okay, so let's talk about PvP now because, you know, obviously... Um, actually, let's, yeah, let's talk about PvP now. So there's two different ways to play. You can play, as you guys have seen my PvP videos, um, I play in a more uh, melee, mid to melee, mid-range to melee range a burst assassin build. But you can also play it in a range kite, a mid-range kiting build. If you're gonna play a mid-range kiting build, this is gonna be kind of the build you're gonna be looking at here. And basically, the way this build works is, you know, you have your range skills here. You have two slows and knife throwing and wind snatcher. Don't use them back to back because they're slows. Yes, you can get attack speed if the opponent is already slowed, but honestly, use it, use them as slows to kite. Okay. Then you also have this nimble leap to help you with mobility to stay kiting and you you pretty much have your crossbow out most of the time and you're attacking them and you're just kiting them once they're really really low then you can go into shadow strike and brutal incision to get them killed but yeah you're kind of just like hiding them away um and this is kind of like going to be your mid-range uh build a mid-range kiting build it does you, you can find some good success with this uh i personally just don't enjoy it in my opinion, if you're going to play a mid-range kiting build, might as well just play longbow to get double the range, right? Uh, yeah, okay. So now let's talk about the builds that I like. The build that I like is more of a mid-range to melee range, more of an assassin-like build. Okay. So that is going to be kind of like this. This one, you still have your mid-range opener, right? You open with mid-range. And you swap the dagger and you go in for... You're just going to swap the dagger, go in, and you're going to get your um, melee damage out. Uh, this is my favorite build, but obviously you're in melee range. It's a lot easier to die if people focus you, so keep that in mind. Um, now, with this build, uh, basically it's the same opener. Inject Venom, Thorn Gale, Selfless Diffusion. Sometimes you want to save Selfless Diffusion because it also is a, a bind removal. So if there's a lot of longbow users, you can save this to kind of remove the CC. Um, and then mortal mark, and then you go in. I use weak point shot because it is really good raw damage, but you can replace this if you want with like nimble leap for extra kind of mobility. Um, you can replace it for shot wind snatcher if you want to slow the target. Um, yeah, okay. After that, you're going to... Uh, use quick fire and then you're going to shadow step in and then after shadow step you're going to use predatory strike now when you shadow step you're going to bind them you can use ankle strike 
to get a hard CC of a knockdown. I personally don't use it in Korea anymore because everybody, a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people are using a program right now that allows you to auto block CC attacks or fury attacks. And it's really, really frustrating and annoying. So it feels like this is kind of useless in Korea for me right now. So I just use Fatal Stigma instead. Um, Fatal Stigma, especially when you get it to Epic, is actually pretty good because you already have a lot of poisons on them. So it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, so like realistically, if you don't, then you would have Ankle Strike here. You don't want to use Ankle Strike right away after Shadow Strike unless you have really slow attack speed because the reason why you don't necessarily want to do that is because of the fact that players will, as soon as you jump to them, a lot of players will start spamming their dodge as well. So um, it's kind of obvious that you're going to use Ankle Strike. So sometimes I do a Predatory Strike and then Ankle Strike after. If I have really high attack speed, so it just depends on your dagger, sometimes I'll do Shadow Strike, Predatory Strike, Knife Throwing, and then Ankle Strike. So it just depends. Um, but you have like two seconds, basically, uh, to get Ankle Strike off. So it's really, really fast. Uh, yeah, okay. So regardless of what you do there, then you use, uh, you can use Predatory Strike into Brutal Incision. If you have Thorngale up still, use Knife Throwing, because that is a lot of damage. I can potentially... Uh, kill somebody with literally just, uh, I think they're doing 1v1, so I don't want to interrupt that. Um, I can literally kill somebody sometimes with just these before doing the brutal incision stuff. Um, and it's pretty nuts. Let me ask him. I don't know. Oh, wait, they are, they are, wait, I don't know if he's fighting or not. Oh, yo, bro. Uh, in case it is a damage, in case he says yes, let me just go ahead and do this real quick. Okay, all right. All right, so he said okay, so let's see if I can show you. That is just these without actually doing the actual melee part of it. I basically almost killed them without doing the melee part. And that's why if you have high enough attack speed, using ankle knife throwing is really, really strong. Uh, because if you have Thorngale up, you can kill them. Thank you. And obviously, if I had Fatal Stigma, he was dead, right? Uh, if I had put Fatal Stigma, or even if I just did the melee part of the attack, he had died. Um, so yeah, so that's a very clear reason why you want knife throwing. Uh, sorry, making guide video. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that answers that. And these are the passives I use. I didn't really talk about the passives, but basically I take these passives. A lot of people in on on my server that I'm playing right now, a lot of people stack endurance. So I use vicious vicious fangs to for additional critical hit. Um, because it's really important. Um, everyone here stacks endurance instead of evasion. So getting more crit rate means I can still kill them very, very fast. As you can see, um, use assassin's instinct for more crit again, and then wrathful edge for crit damage. This crossbow dagger relies on crit. So getting crit damage is a no brainer. Shadow walker for evasion. Cause I stack evasion. Um, and then ambidexterity, because that just means my offhand, we my offhand weapon will do more damage. Um, when I say offhand weapon, crossbow dagger, dual wields, uh, both crossbow dagger, it dual wields, right? As you can see here, right? I have one in my right hand and my left hand. So what that means is every time you use an attack, you have a chance to do the attack again with your offhand or with your second weapon. Um, and so this just increases the damage uh, when I land offhands. Nature's power gives me increased damage every time I use a mobility skill. As you can see in my in my opener, I I don't always do weak point and quick fire with nature's power, but as soon as they use shadow strike, that procs nature's power, so everything else is part of uh, increased damage. It's really really good to have. Um, okay, and then I use detection. I use this because it procs really really a really high rate, and I I have I stack evasion, so this just gives me even more evasion. Um, and piercing strike bonus damage uh basically every time you do an attack or a hit each hit the bonus damage procs um and so it's like per hit so like i stack a lot of bonus damage right so like 
Right now, my bonus damage is at 67. When I dodge roll, it's at 93. I used to have another accessory that gave me even more bonus damage, but I just replaced it with something else. Um, so that means every single hit is, is extra 97. Right now, every single hit is an extra 93 bonus damage, right? So that means that uh, my opener, right? My opener right now does, let's see, Thorn Gale is a double, doubles it. So let's just uh, assume Selfless is a diffusion proc, so it's a double hit. So Mortal Mark is two attacks. Thorn Gale is, makes it three attacks. Uh, this is one attack. Thorn Gale makes it two attacks, so that's five attacks. Quick Fire is three times. Selfless Diffusion is six times. Thorn Gale makes it... Um, oh, shit, I messed up. So Mortal Mark is one. It does twice with Selfless, and then Thorn Gale doubles that, so that's four. Quick Fire is one. It does twice with Selfless, so that's two. And then Thorn Gale doubles that, so that's another four. So that's eight. Quick Fire is, is three. Selfless means offhand, so that's six. Thorn Gale do doubles that, so that's 12. So that's 20 attacks right there. Now... On those 20 attacks, um, well, actually, 20 minus 4. 16, of those 16 attacks, Mortar Mark is stacked twice. So each of those 16 attacks also hits again because of Mortar Mark. Um, so, that's, uh, so that's 20 plus another 16 attacks. That's 36 attacks. Um, and Knife Throwing does 5. Selfless makes it 20. Uh, sorry, Selfless makes it 10. Knife Throwing makes it 20. Um and then because it's mortal mark, that 20 is double, so it's 40. So as you can see, it stacks into a lot of attacks. So bonus damage, you know, 97 times 40 is what? Almost what? Uh almost 4,000 extra damage. So as you can see, it stacks pretty high. Uh yeah. So that's kind of like my PvP setup. Um, I went over PvE, I went over PvP. I think I went over PvE builds, but again, I will be streaming all day today. Uh, during the beta and anytime during the beta that I'm playing, I will be streaming so you guys can ask all your questions. Come to my stream, ask your questions, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. If you guys see me in the open world beta or in the... Sorry. <laughs> if you guys see me in, in the Amazon beta, uh, go easy on me. I'm sick. All right, peace.